Hey everyone, welcome to PHP Basics. My name is Sean. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. Uh, so obviously I have a form with a make, model, and serial number. And whenever I hit submit, that's going to be inserted into my test database, to a table called inventory, where I have three um, columns, a make, model, and serial number. Currently I've only got one record inserted in here. Uh, now this form is designed to where I can add multiple instances of that form. Not necessarily instances, more like copies. Um, and I can add those and I can also take those away. The purpose that I, or the reason that I built this was because oftentimes I'm inserting multiple inventory items of the same product type. Or if you ever have to enter multiple instances or multiple uh, fields into a database and you don't want to go one page at a time or you don't know how many you're actually going to have to input this gives you the ability and the functionality to add as many or as little as you want now what I've also done is set this up to where if I make the type in HP and the model in 8300 I can now double click on one of these other fields and it's going to populate that field Okay. Whenever I hit submit and all the forms are filled out correctly, it's going to insert all of those into the database simultaneously, checking for how many there are, um, for errors for each for each set. Uh, these get passed through as an array, and it will parse that out through PHP. So this video is going to be broken down into two parts. The first part is just building the form, doing the jQuery, making it look pretty, right? The second video is going to be working with the PHP portion of it, getting it into the database, and that's a little bit different as well. So let's jump right in and I'll show you how I did this. So let me wipe out what I've got and go ahead and build the initial structure of the, of, of the page, right? So we'll have some PHP. We're gonna have our HTML tag. And we'll have head, we'll close the head. And then we'll have the body tag, and we'll close the body tag as well. Okay, now the first thing that we want to do is reference jQuery. And to do that, what I'm going to do is borrow this from Google. If you go to Google and you just search Google jQuery API, it should be the first link, hosted libraries. And we're just going to grab this little snippet of code right here. Now what we can do is just plug that into the head and we'll go ahead and start on our form. So the form is pretty typical. Uh, method is equal to post. Now I want all this to be contained in a linear format, so I'm just going to throw it inside of a div tag. And this is going to be our wrapper or our container. So we'll say ID equals container. And we'll have a make. And this input type will be a text. And the name is just going to be make. And then we'll do that for the other two. Model and serial. Now below the div tag, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in my input for uh, the submit button. Type will be submit, and the name is just going to equal submit as well. Let's go ahead and do a paragraph break on that just to drop it down. All right, so if I take a look at this as it is, it just looks like that, which is fine. It's what it's supposed to look like. And now let's go ahead and add that link to add more. Now this is just a standard HTML link. And we're just going to give it the uh, anchor tag there. And we'll give this an ID, call it add. And we'll just say um, add more. Okay. So now we have our completed form. We've got our make model serial number, our add more link, and our submit, submit button, which currently both do absolutely nothing. So that's where jQuery comes in. Underneath our referenced script, let's create a new one. 
Now, the first thing that we always do whenever it comes to jQuery is check to see if the form is ready or the page itself is ready, right? So to do that, we'll do a dollar sign and then open parentheses, document dot ready. And then inside of this, we're going to do a function. We're going to be sending this to the event handler. So we'll reference that there. And that's it. Okay. So typically what I do is I try to establish the structure of how my code is going to go. I want a place for variables. We need uh, a spot to add rows to the form. A spot to remove rows from the form. And then also to populate, um, we'll say values from the first row that double click thing that I showed you earlier. Okay. The variables, this is going to be like if we want to establish a max number of rows, if there's any HTML that we need to throw into a variable, things of that nature. Okay. But for now, what I'll do is we'll just say, um, based off the ID of add, which is this little guy right here. Whenever you're referencing an ID in jQuery, you use it using the hashtag or the pound symbol function is going to be click and we're going to create a function in here the same way that we did before meaning we're going to send this to the event handler and we'll just say alert just to kind of show the functionality of it so if I go back and I reload my page and I click on the add more button I'm going to get an alert box Okay, so that shows that the functionality is actually there. So let's get rid of this. Now, if I was to say, and we're going to, what we're going to do is a jQuery function called append. We're going to, to append more of these fields to the bottom of this div tag, which is currently called container, right? So let's reference container. And we're going to use the append function. And if I was just to say hello, then each time that I click this, it's going to show hello. All right, multiple instances of hello. So essentially, this is where all the HTML for the next uh, for the child rows are going to go. However, I really don't want to put it in here because it's going to look sloppy, right? So what I'll do is up here in my variables, I'll just create a variable and I'll call it uh, HTML, right? Now I could just clone this element here, but then I'm going to get the add more link. And I also need to change uh, some of these fields around. In fact, what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and give these IDs. Now we'll call this make, call this ID equals model, and then ID equals serial. And these are going to change whenever I um, insert the next rows. So what I'll do, is I will just copy and paste that into here and then make my changes accordingly. For one, this has to be on a single line, right? So I'm just going to backspace up to make sure that these are all on a single line. And then I'm also going to say, um, we'll say child make, the ID will be child model and then child serial. And then instead of add, we're going to have remove. And I'll just symbolize that with an X. Okay. To clean this up a little bit, I will add a paragraph break and I'll encapsulate this inside of a div tag. And now all I have to do is reference the HTML variable. Okay, so let's refresh the page and see what that looks like. Great, so now we can add as many of these things as we want, but we're still not able to remove them yet. Okay, so let's do that next. Now, with the click function, 
it's adding a function to the page once it's already loaded, which means we're just adding content to the page. However, you can't do that if you want to take things away from the page. You have to use what used to be known as the live function, but has been turned into the on function, which means whenever you uh, perform a certain uh, action, some other action happens in real time. Okay, to do that, we're going to have to reference the container itself because that's where the element lives. So we'll say uh, container dot on, and this is where we actually um, reference the action first, which the action will be click. The element is going to be the remove element, which is the ID here. And then whatever our function is going to be. So we'll say function. And likewise, this is going to the event handler. And all we'll really have to do is reference the, um, the remove. Or we'll just say this dot parent because we're going to be removing the entire div tag. So we'll just reference div dot remove. Okay, stare at this for just a second and think about what this means. Okay, our master element is the container element, right? Everything is contained inside of this div tag. Okay, inside of this div tag, we have another div tag with this information. Okay, whenever we click on the remove element, which is this X, then it's going to perform this function referencing this which is remove and then we're going to reference the parent object to that which is the div tag and we're going to remove the whole thing okay that may not make sense but just study it just a little bit and, and you'll understand it all right so now let's go ahead and add and then remove okay so now we can add and remove as many as we want However, you may not want to be able to add a hundred of these things. You may want to simplify it and only allow the user to add so many, right? So to do that, we're just going to use simple if statements, okay? So what I'll do is inside my variables, I'll have a variable and we'll just call it max rows and we'll give it a value of five for now, right? And then the first row number, we'll just say var x equals 1. Okay. So now inside the click function, we can say if x is less than or equal to max rows, then... Uh, then append the next row, all right? And then we can just say x plus plus, and then close that if statement. Okay, let's give this a try. One, two, three, four, five, and that's all I can click. So now I have a maximum of, okay, I broke something. <laughs> well, let's see. I can add, but I can't add after I take them away. And that's because once I remove that field, I'm not adding back to the number of, uh, of available rows to add. I'm just using them all up, right? So that's simple. Whenever I come to remove the row, all I have to do is do X minus minus, which will subtract one, right? So that should... One, two, three, four, five. Let's remove a couple and then we can add them back. All right, simple as that. So the only thing left to do uh, for this section is to show how I'm duplicating the data. And that's pretty simple as well. Um, notice how I have ID, make, model, and serial number. This is the reference to this particular field. All I have to do is grab the value of this field and add it to uh, the child field, okay? 
To do that, once again, I'm referencing the container. And we're going to be using the on function as well. And this time, the action is going to be double click. All right, and we're going to be instancing the uh, the make first. So we'll say hashtag child make, and then we'll do a function. Now we have to do is this dot val is going to equal the value of whatever the original field said. So what we can do is we'll say make dot value. Now I know there are a lot of parentheses in here and it's starting to get a little uh, convoluted. But essentially the value of this is going to equal the value of that, which should be fairly simple to understand. So let me go back in and refresh my page. Um, if I just say HP, then I should be able to double click and it's going to do that there. So for the model, all I really have to do is copy and paste the same code and uh, change the make to the model. Okay. And then, of course, I could turn autocomplete off and required and things of that nature here as well. But let's give it a shot and see what happens. So I'm back my max number of rows. If I put in uh, Elite 8300, well, now I can come in and double click that. Or I can do Dell and double click, and it's going to populate that as well. So that's pretty much it for this part of the video. In the next video, we're going to show. Uh, how to get this data and actually submit it to the database. So I'll see you there.